Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about these crazy landscapes of different graph shapes that all actually are just different values of A over here in this simple looking equation. I actually have a version of this equation written on my wall back there. I wrote that during one of the live streams I did on this channel once, so some of my viewers who were there for that or some of my graphing streams may already know this particular equation, but I did want to show some more details about it and make sure that everyone had seen this particular equation at its different states because it's very interesting to me as not only such a simple looking equation for how many different infinite webs of shapes or landscape or whatever you want to call them it creates, but also the way it's a simple equation looks very similar to another classic equation, the circle equation. In a way, all of these crazy landscapes are distorted versions, slight modifications of the equation for a circle. So let me lead you sh through why and how that's the case. To start off, here we have a coordinate grid where if I graph something like x plus y equals zero, I'm gonna just get all the points where that's true that all lie on the same line. Now, if I turn that zero to A and adjust this slider to different points, well, I can move the line, but it's still not super interesting. Doesn't have a crazy amount of difference between all of these states. Now, if I, instead of just saying X plus Y equals something on the other end, I instead say x squared plus y squared equals something, I get a circle. And the circle will be centered at the origin, the point with coordinates 0, 0. And we'll have a radius of the square root of a here. Or if I had called this side a squared for whatever a was here, then that would be the radius. For example, if I set this to 4 for A, and it shows me all of the points here where the square of the x-coordinates value plus the square of the y-coordinates value equals 4, well, I get this circle with a radius of 2. Now, what we're going to throw into the circle equation to make it more interesting, which is something I found just while fiddling around with different possibilities that equations can do on graphs in different combos, which is a fun activity I recommend. These are made on the free online graphing calculator site Desmos, and this isn't sponsored by them or anything, but it's a super cool, useful, simple graphing calculator. If you ever want to try looking for other cool variations on this, because trust me, I've found plenty of wild variations of this, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, if I decide just to have a little more of this picture painted, I could turn this equal sign into an inequality. I could say, when is x squared plus y squared more or less than the particular a value I've set. For example, if I say when is x squared plus y squared less than or equal to that a, I sort of get a filled in version of the circle. And if I say when is that greater than or equal, I sort of get the circle and everything outside it filled in. Because all of these points, apart from what's within that circle, will have more or equal in the case of the very edge of the circle when you add up the squares of the coordinates compared to this a value I've set. And if I change the a value, I get different states of this circle with the world in the background being filled in. And if I set a down to zero, well, the circle, if you can call it that, 
that would be filled in by the equal version of the equation is a point. Only the origin itself, 0, 0, is a point on this infinite plane where the squares of the x and y coordinates added up equals 0. And if I do the filled in inequality version, we get that point where it's equal and the entire rest of that infinite plane where the squares of the coordinates were more. Similarly, if I set it negatively, we don't even have that point at the origin. We just have every point on this grid following where x squared plus y squared is more than this negative value. So it's sort of like the circle, and putting it back to the equal sign to be clear, can't exist when we're at a negative value of a. It can't exist less than zero, and it's debatable whether the state of zero would be considered a sort of trivial circle or not a circle at all. So we can say that from zero and definitely at least less, we're not getting a circle with any non-zero radius or size. Now, what's interesting about this is that on the crazier landscape graphs I showed a minute ago that we're leading towards, things do exist in these zones when A is negative. And it doesn't exist necessarily everywhere. There are states, like if I go to A being negative 5, and I go to this crazier equation where the entire thing is filled in and we don't get any interesting picture, like when the circle was negative. But remember, the circle didn't even exist when A was negative 1. Now, let's put this to negative 1 without too many spoilers again and see that at negative 1, we get this whole landscape because not only is most of the plane filled still, but now we have an infinite amount of these little islands or rocks of different sizes that are sort of gaps in that. And if I had set it to equal instead of the inequality, those would be basically our picture. The edges between the inequality are what we'll get for the equal sign here. And we can sort of see this web of islands. Now, that's not the only thing that this graph's hiding. But first, let's lead fully there by noting that this looks like the circle equation I had set with an inequality there. But I put this thing sine around each the x squared and the y squared this time. Now, sine is a classic thing on graphs. And if we just look at the spots where y equals sine of x or the y coordinate equals the sine of the x coordinate, we're going to get this wave that will continue infinitely with periods related to multiples of pi and continue infinitely in both ways, which is a little different than the circle, which for a given size was going to have a finite bound. And somewhere on this sort of number line-ish x-axis, we have a point where beyond some absolute value, nothing related to the circle will exist. But when y is the sign of x, we get something infinitely on each way in the x direction. Similarly, if I had switched this to x equals the sign of y, we would get a flip version of that, get an infinite stretch along the y-axis. So what if I had said the sine of the y-coordinate equals the sine of the x-coordinate? Well, when I say that, I get an infinite stretch in both directions. However, the waviness almost cancels out and gives us a square grid. And if we look at where this square grid hits certain things, look where it passes the y-axis. 3.14 something, and yep, it hits there at pi. 
classic irrational number starting in 3.14 that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And pi is once again related to distances within this as well as multiples of pi but it's now become a square grid that extends infinitely in both directions. So what if we combine that concept of putting sign around what's happening with X and around what's happening with Y to maybe get some sort of infinite stretch in each direction with the circle equation? And that's exactly what I did one day when I was fiddling around here. I said, when is sine of x squared plus sine of y squared going to equal some a? Essentially just sticking signs around each part of the left hand there of a circles equation. And what I found was, wait a minute, when I'm all the way up here for my a, it doesn't exist. I would have a circle at this size, but this new equation has no solutions visible no solutions at all, in fact, when this is a high enough number. However, if we go down and get to just the right range, and warning that at some points it does say for this equation and some of the more complicated equations you can put in, that some of the fine detail is not resolved, that means if you're zoomed out at a far enough scale, it's giving the computer trouble. I will at some point try more thorough, detailed, uh, non-glitchy in any way, graphs of all this stuff at some point in the upcoming grade negative two on the main channel. There will be an episode or two throughout the grade of my main episodes on that combo class channel. Make sure you're subscribed to that one as well. It's linked in the description. And... Some of those episodes will go further down this rabbit hole of what insane shapes I've found while fiddling around in my spare time and in some of my live streams here and what's really going on within them mathematically. But for this one, just to get our brilliant sneak peek of it, let's now track backwards when it's just equal to A. So here is where if I had just said sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equals 1.9, these are the points where it's true. And we do, within this range now, have that infinite thing and a changing infinite thing due to it both containing an exponent higher than an exponent of one, you know, squareds there, as well as those trigonometric sine functions we not only get it infinite, but changing in each direction in size. And you can sort of see with these islands, interestingly, that it's almost like you average out the size of one of these and the size of one of these to get one of these. Like these are wide and tall, so we get a somewhat circular one. Here I'm getting a thinner tall one mixed with that somewhat wide one and a little tall. And they, in some weird ways, average out into that shape. Not using the mathematical term average, but in a sort of interesting visual pattern. And that relates to how the most circular ones fall right on this diagonal, where we see sort of a sideways one and an upper one with the same width or height flipped as each other. So a lot to unpack even in this setting. But as we change a lower we get more and more things. These islands merge together. And when A is one, if I had just graphed, when is the sine of X squared plus sine of Y squared equal to one, this is what I get. All these eight like infinity like symbols, cl clearer versions of all those islands and this cool center. And as I go downward a bit, it starts to merge into this form of center. And then when we get to zero, when we're graphing, when is sine of x squared plus sine of y squared equal to zero? And some of these gaps are that having trouble, so let's zoom in a little. And this is what we get when we look at that equaling zero, which is sort of magnificent because it's a modified version of the circle equation, and the circle only had a single point existent at the origin when this was equal to zero. The circle was basically non-existent, apart from, yes, containing one point, 
But here, this modified circle equation has this insane infinite web. And we can even go under zero. Then it splits apart in another way. And here's as we tick down with A being negative numbers. And it does vanish at a point. It vanishes when our A is too low, but its range extends further than the range of the circle equation did. The circle equation wouldn't have had anything here when it's negative. Similarly, if I switch these to inequalities, the circle equation, if I say when is that more or equal to A, it's just everything filled in. And none of these are the equal state. These are all the more than state. And here though, I get a much more interesting picture when I fill in that inequality. We get a filled in background with all these patterns cut out of it. And as I go to zero, my inequality looks extra cool there. And same with one, which is arguably my favorite state of it. And then you can go upward to all these other cool ones. I'm also, I'm a fan of all these states of zero is pretty great. When you're at about half, that's pretty cool. You get to about one, that's pretty cool. And you get your scattered islands on both sides of different sorts. So all of this is hiding inside that one equation that I had to write on my wall back there, the upper of those, or a modified version there where I had said a squared on the right, which would have done basically the same thing just with a requiring more sliding to get the same thing. And, or that would require less sliding to get the same effect. And all of that's hiding inside one simple shape, which I think is a cool example of how something that might look algebraically simple might be super geometrically complex. <laughs> now, like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg because there's so many other cool ones I've found. Let's say, for example, when this is set to zero, in the state where the circle equation would just be a point, or if it had an inequality, just everything filled in, and instead of saying plus sine of y squared, I'm going to say minus, and I'm going to take the tangent instead of the sine. The tangent is one of the other most common trigonometric functions that's similar to but different than the sine. And if I take that here on my graph, and here's where A is zero, I get this infinity symbol and all these ocean wave-like ripples and then all these monolith-like oval-like things and its own landscape. And of course, I can change the A to do all sorts of things with that as well. So there are many others that I will collect into an extra clear form as we'll go through many of these in an episode someday on the main combo class channel. And I also will be continuing sometimes to play around with finding new ones on some of my live streams here. I will be live streaming later today at 6 p.m. as part of a weekly scheduled stream I'm doing for at least this month which I'll be doing 6 p.m. on Thursdays and another one on 10 at 10 a.m. on Mondays. So hopefully you're able to join some of those. In any case, thank you so much for watching this. Let's take one little stroll through what the whole moving graph looked like again of this original one we were playing with and watch how here everything is filled in and my A is now ticking up to create all of this magnificent beauty. So leave a comment if you enjoyed seeing some cool graphs or if you have any other suggestions for me to graph later of equations that you found that look cool. And if for some reason you are new here, make sure to join us here as a combo lord because we are super close to 100,000 subscribers and the fact that we're probably going to get there during grade negative one is just insane. So thank you all and I'll see you again tonight in that live stream.